Hi, my name is Dr. Al Garza, and I've get a number of email uh, questions regarding Matthew 23 and the seed of Moses, and a question regarding its interpretation and regarding some of the translations from the Greek text and the Hebrew text that are out there. So let me give you kind of what uh, my thoughts are on it as a research scholar. Matthew 23, if you want to rely strictly on the Greek text, then you can read it plainly as it states, uh, where this is how it would read. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the seat of Moses. Therefore, all that they tell you to do, do and observe. But do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. Now, this apparently seems to say that Yeshua is instructing disciples to do everything they say and observe everything they do and do them, but do not do what they do. So, you know, what they tell you to do, do them, observe them, uh, but do not do what they do because what? They don't probably, they don't do what they do, uh, what they say. They tell people they do things that are truth opposed supposedly, but they themselves don't do them. That is kind of the interpretation that a lot of modern rabbinic uh, messianic Jews uh, like to give on this. And the reason they do that is because they themselves like to push on their students and others that we should observe and, and listen to the rabbis uh, in the writings and the Talmud and other things that they also have the authority still as they did back then. And that Yeshua is enforcing that they have authority and that the disciples are supposed to uh, do what they say and observe what they do and, and do them. Um, even though they themselves didn't do it. Now, that's okay if you want to believe that. I, personally, the context and in the rest of the Gospel of Matthew as well as in John all the other Gospels, that does not fit at all. In fact, we have a number of independent Hebrew texts that we can look at that have a different reading than what I just read you. Uh, and we know this because we, they have been uh, Hebrew Gospels that have been discovered and found and they're being researched today and examined. And uh, so far, they can be dated between the 1st and 4th century based on the context and the quotes of the early church fathers about them and in them. So what we need to look at is how does the Hebrew text read? Now, we know Yeshua, Jesus, spoke and taught in Hebrew to his disciples. We know that as a fact. So I think the Hebrew would be the closest uh, to what we should understand in the text in the Greek translation that comes later. So let's le read how the Hebrew reads uh, in translation to the English. It says, Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the seat of Moses. Therefore, all that he tells you to do, do and observe. But do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. Then verse 4. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger. Now, according to the uh, Hebrew Matthew te uh, text of, Ma of Matthew 23, it's referring to that uh, they seat themselves seat of Moses, uh, and it says, "Do all, therefore all that he tells you to do," referring to Moses, "do and observe," which makes sense, and do not do according to their deeds, referring to the Pharisees. So what Yeshua is saying in that Hebrew text is, "Listen, they sit in the seat of Moses. Since they sit there, do what Moses tells you to do, because that's what they're supposed to be sitting and supposed to be teaching." Do what Moses tells you to do. Do and observe that. Uh, but do not do what they do, referring to the Pharisees, because their deeds are pretty much wicked and sinful. And the fact that verse 4 says they lay up heavy burdens on the people. Uh, they shut out the kingdom of God, you'd see in, in later on in Matthew. So we got to understand that Yeshua is not telling his disciples or his students to to do and observe everything that the Pharisees say. When in the next breath he says that the, how they lay up heavy burdens on people and they shut them out of the kingdom and he gives them the seven woes and how they are murderers like their forefathers and so forth, which we're going to discuss. He's not telling them that. In fact, even in the Talmud itself, uh, which these Messianic rabbis like to follow and read from, even the Talmud tells you. It says, It is a tradition of Rabbi Ishmael. There are, there are in the words of the Torah that which is bound and forbidden, and that which is uh, and that which is loose or free, and there are in them light things, and there are in them heavy things. But the words of the scribes, all of them are heavy. So again, uh, the words of the elders are heavier than the words of the prophets. So why would Yeshua want them to observe and listen to them with these heavy burdens? In fact, we don't see that. And if we want to draw it to its a full logical conclusion, 
then why didn't they observe and listen to the, uh, the the Pharisees and the scribes when they when they would probably would tell them, "Don't follow Yeshua. Don't follow this false prophet. This one who has a devil spirit in him." Um, why would they not listen to them about that and reject Yeshua, since they have the authority to sit in Moses? All they had to do is reject Yeshua and tell them to do the same. We have that authority. Reject your Messiah, supposedly. It doesn't make any sense. And in fact, if you read the book of Acts, they never listened to the Pharisees. Even when they told them to stop speaking the name of Yeshua and stop doing those things and performing the miracles, they never stopped listening uh, to Yeshua. They stopped listening to the Pharisees and the scribes, and they listened to Moses, and they quoted Moses against them as the judge, and even quoted the Psalms and the prophets. So again, we have to look at these things and say, okay, Yeshua never said that in the Greek text. In the Matthew, it makes much more sense. And even in Matthew 15, where Yeshua condemns these uh, scribes and Pharisees by bringing in the tradition of the elders, that they, tr that they sin against the Torah of Moses with their traditions of the elders and the traditions of men, quoting Isaiah 29, where they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and the fear of, of, of them against God is not there. They have rejected. In fact, in Jeremiah 9, Jeremiah calls them lying scribes who have rejected the word of the Lord. So they, you know, and these are the same uh, people in the first century, the time of Yeshua Jesus, as, the, as those false prophets, those lying scribes who have rejected the word of the Lord. So why would Yeshua uh, tell his disciples to follow uh, these men who have sinned against the Torah? And even John, in John's gospel, Yeshua tells them that if you knew, if you knew Moses, you would know me because he wrote about me. How could, you, how could you hear my words if you don't even hear the words of Moses? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. They, they've rejected him. They reject Moses. They reject Moses. They reject the Messiah. That's how it works because Yeshua is the living Torah. And they have rejected him. They reject Moses himself. So there is no way that these scribes and Pharisees were obeying the words of the Torah fully in the sense that they upheld their traditions greater than the Torah itself. So for me, I rely on the Hebrew text of the different uh, numerous Hebrew sources for Matthew 23 that say that Yeshua is telling them to obey him, Moses. Do and observe what he tells you to do and do not do what they tell you. Those lying scribes, those uh, ones who rejected the word of the Lord, don't listen to them or do what they do because they bring up heavy burdens on you as even the Talmud states. So again, this is a, uh, this is a shame that a lot of messianic uh, rabbis today try to uh, uh, assert that Matthew 23 as proving that Yeshua himself uh, spoke on the authority that the, the rabbis and the and the and those scribes and the Pharisees they all have authority because they sit in Moses' seats. That is not what he was saying. They were hypocrites because if they would have listened to Moses, they would know that Moses spoke about Yeshua Jesus himself. But because they rejected him and Moses, they will not hear him. So uh, there's no debate on this. If you want to, if you want, if these Messianic Jewish rabbis today want to uh, have the authority of the Greek text as their in their position, that's fine. Um, I I think the Hebrew uh, text of Matthew 23 is greater in its uh, translation and interpretation of this text, using that Moses is the one that we listen to and observe, and me as a as a Jewish as a Jewish believer in Yeshua. Uh, I study, of course, Jewish writings as part of my research. I, I study the, the, the Talmud and the Midrash and all the other writings uh, because as part of my research that I need to do in comparison. But I am not one who would ever try to bring the authority of the rabbis uh, that the, we got to listen to them and what they say in interpretation of Scripture or the areas of what it means. Far from it. I go to the Scripture first, the Hebrew Scriptures of, of the Bible, the Torah and the Prophets and the writings. Uh, and I come to the uh, New Testament under the words of Yeshua, my Messiah, who is my rabbi, and I listen to him. And I challenge everybody, look at these texts from the Hebrew and the Greek. And which one do you think has more weight since Yeshua himself spoke and taught in Hebrew? And which one makes more sense as Yeshua himself condemns them, even quoting the prophets of Isaiah 29, Jeremiah 9 of the lying scribes who have rejected the word of the Lord and who bring in the tradition of the elders and the and traditions of men that were learned. Uh, they were not ordained. Uh, so again, I hope this helps on the Matthew 23 controversy of the seat of Moses. If you have any questions, please email me at dralgars at email.com or leave a comment here. And please share and like if, think, if you think this was helpful and useful to you in understanding Matthew 23 and the seat of Moses. So thank you and God bless.